Good afternoon. And this is Josie McDaniel with us again today. <clears throat> Come on in. Okay. I'm sad to announce you've already heard the news, but we have not mentioned it here yet. We have had a sick storm related fatality, and that's Miss Rhonda R. Hartley who passed away Sunday morning in Lexington County. Captain Dog, Chaplain, please. Thank you, sir. There is a passage of scripture in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, beginning at verse 5, that says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. And in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Let's pray together. Our Father, you're mighty, you're powerful, you're able to do anything but fail. And even when nature seems to wreak havoc upon our lives, we have to put our trust in you. We thank you for always allowing the sun to shine. We pray for those that have been displaced, those that have suffered loss, those that are grieving now for family members. But we thank you that you're still God and you're able to do anything but fail. So right now we pray that you would move in a mighty way. As the water recedes, build a dam around us. Protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger. And allow us to feel your presence. We thank you for leadership that cares about us. We thank you for our governor, for the TAG, for all of the officials, all of the team members that are working together to help us be safe. Walk on the water, Lord and say, peace be still. This is our prayer now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Colonel Dog. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. National Weather Service. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. John Quirella. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. So we're experiencing flooding across the PD Basin, which includes the Great PD, Little PD, Lumber, Lynches, and Waccamaw Rivers. Cresting is occurring at the PD at Sharaf, but will take several days if not longer, to crest at points downstream. Once the rivers crest, the floodwaters will recede at slow rates given the volume of water that fell not only here in South Carolina, but also in North Carolina. We urge the public to stay in touch with local emergency management officials and for those living in low-lying areas to take preparedness actions now while they have time to protect property. Flooding impacts create very dangerous conditions. Please don't drive through flooded roadways. Additional information on river flood stages can be found at the National Weather Service's Southeast River Forecast Center at weather.gov slash S-E-R-F-C. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. As uh, Mr. Quirello mentioned, we have flooding that has already occurred. We've had a lot of flash flooding, as you already know, of course, and you've experienced that. And by the way, that's washed out a lot of roads. And again, you can't tell if the road's washed out. Might look like there's just a little bit of water over. It could be the road's gone underneath. So don't drive on those roads. But also we are having flooding. Uh, these, these pictures of yesterday, these are taken from a helicopter. Uh, we went up and these are, let's see. Uh, that's is that's, that's Terrell right there. And you see the highway. Uh, that is, uh, that's, I believe that is Nichols uh, from the air. As you, you see there's water all over the place. Water is, is in uh, in Marion County uh, down uh, towards uh, Ori. This is Conway. That's looking at the marina. And in the top left-hand corner of that are the ash pits there behind the uh, old Granger station. And that's a subject of some concern. And this is, the, see, towards the left-hand bottom, you see the river going by but I tell you from the air when you look at uh, you look down you can't often can't tell where the river begins and where it ends because there's water everywhere but uh, those were taken yesterday that is on highway 501 uh, that is uh, uh, Christie Hall will go into that in a little while but you will see there two rows of obstacles there the two there's a four lane road going by the old Granger plant from Conway. This is the Conway Bypass headed to the south towards Myrtle Beach. There's another picture of it. Hold it right there for a minute, please. You see sand stacked up on the left 
uh, <coughs> that is on the, the eastern side of that road as it, 501 as it leaves Conway, that's Lake Busby on the right, and that's the old Granger facility, a part of it on the left. Well, the sandbags you see are white, and they're on the right, and then in the middle, where the dividing line between the, uh, the four lanes is, and you see the vehicles headed towards the beach, uh, they're right uh, near that center line. Th those are the two lanes that will be fully protected when, when this, uh, these sandbags and the other obstacles are fully placed. The sand on the left, you see, is being used to fill up the containers that are going down the center of that road. So what we're doing is taking great steps to see that we have one, at least one major artery that is fully functional and we'll be able to get in and out of the Horry County and uh, particularly uh, on towards Myrtle Beach. There are a lot of people there that are going to need supplies because the flooding is coming. The flooding, the main flooding has not yet reached this area. It's coming down. As uh, John Quirello mentioned in Chiral, they've about peaked out up there. It's about crested up there, but Chiral is, is way, way on up in Chesterfield County. So the water will be coming down through Marlboro and, and Dillon and Marion and on to Ulrey and parts of Darlington and uh, it's coming towards towards the coast, which is of course where all the rivers go. So those are, and Ms. Hall will, will go into some more detail with that. So we are um, we are still preparing for the onslaught of, of this flooding. And we have every asset, every instrumentality uh, available, everything that we have ever had, uh, we have in gear, in position, and, and ready and operating uh, at this time, including the National Guard is, is taking uh, water to, uh, up to Chiral and places where they're out of water. Of course, they take the water out of the rivers and those uh, plants that are there in the river have been, been knocked out and that's gonna happen in some other, other places as well. So as, again, as the waters are, are peaking up in Chesterfield and up around Chiral, uh, they are still tumbling down, rolling down upon us uh, as it comes closer to the to the coast. With that, uh, General Livingston. Thank you, Governor. Uh, all of Team South Carolina continues to support our counties and municipalities throughout the state, uh, mainly from Chesterfield County East, uh, about two counties deep from the North Carolina border. Uh, that has been anywhere from security operations to evacuation support and uh, rescue support to include hardening of facilities, uh, both road facilities and uh, infrastructure for the towns and the counties. Uh, we have about, uh, we have 3,080 3, National Guardsmen currently mobilized and we are beginning uh, water purification operations in support of Chesterfield County. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Christy Hall, Department of Transportation Secretary. Thank you, Governor. DOT currently has 850 employees working in the PD area in response to this event and in preparation for the flood that is uh, making its way through the region. We currently have approximately 200 road closures statewide. 40 major roads are closed across the state with severe mobility issues in Chesterfield, parts of Ori, Marion, Dillon and Marlboro counties and we expect that number to grow as the flood makes its way through the state. I-95 is still closed in North Carolina. I-95 northbound in South Carolina is closed at mile marker 181 as we try to uh, look at that area in order to try to restore service. DOT and law enforcement and others are positioned to close those highways across the rivers leading into Horry County as the floodwaters approach and those roads will overtop prior to the arrival of the crest of the flood. So we're poised to close SC9, 917, 501 at Gallivance Ferry as needed when the waters arrive. As the governor mentioned, we've worked very steadily on that, our project lifeline to the Horry County and the Myrtle Beach area over the last several days. I wanna thank the National Guard, Horry County, private contractors from that region as well as the DOT team and their efforts in order to get that project established. Yesterday we completed our preparation work for US 378, that little small section there, about a mile worth of work was completed there yesterday. 
and then 501 bypass in Conway. We're about 70% complete with that work and expect to complete all that preparation work in advance of the floodwaters prior to noon tomorrow. Governor, that completes my report for you. Thank you. Director Leroy Smith, Department of Public Safety. Thank you, Governor. Yes. Uh, as the governor uh, mentioned earlier, we are at six storm-related uh, fatalities, and again, our thoughts and prayers are with the uh, family members of the victims. Uh, Department of Public Safety has 159 uh, troopers and officers assigned to this uh, event. Uh, we are providing various escorts uh, for the Guard, uh, DOT, FEMA, and other um, uh, vehicles. Uh, we've also assigned uh, troopers to ESF 13, uh, which is SLED, assisting the Obie County uh, Police Department with uh, law enforcement and security uh, missions. Uh, we continue to uh, assist the Department of uh, Transportation with road closures and uh, traffic diversions. Uh, as uh, Secretary, Hall, Secretary Hall mentioned earlier, I-95 northbound is closed at mile marker uh, 181. I believe they are allowing some local traffic to get on uh, beyond that point. But once you hit the 13 mile marker in the uh, state of North Carolina, uh, uh, traffic will be diverted uh, to the uh, uh, I-74, US-74 interchange. Uh, that route will take you to uh, Charlotte. And as mentioned before, uh, other routes to Charlotte from South Carolina, uh, if you're traveling uh, from the south coming out of Georgia, uh, a recommended route would be uh, to take exit 86 there in Orangeburg. Uh, that would take you to uh, westbound I-26 uh, into Columbia. Once you're in Columbia, take I-77 northbound into uh, Columbia. And for those motorists traveling on 95 north of the Orangeburg area, uh, exit, uh, exit 160B in Florence, that would be the uh, I-20 corridor, take that route to westbound uh, Columbia, and once you get in Columbia, north on uh, Interstate 77 in, into uh, Charlotte. Thank you, Governor. Thanks, sir. Chief Mark Hill, State Law Enforcement Division. Good afternoon. I want to let you know that as of this time, we have 402, combination of 402 personnel assigned to the affected areas. That's a combination of SLED, DNR, Triple P, PRT, SCDC, SCDPS, and South Carolina National Guardsmen. Those individuals are providing security to the affected areas, the areas that have been evacuated. In addition, they're uh, doing patrols, rescues, and evacuations, and doing welfare checks, and notifying those personnel that are in areas that have the potential to flooding that they need to leave and seek, seek other shelter. Currently, we have 43 assigned to Chesterfield County. We have 10 in Darlington County. We have 95 in Marion County. We have 159 in Horry County, 13 in Marlboro County, 41 in Dillon County, and 13 in Florence County. As you can see from these numbers, law enforcement is out in force in these areas that have been evacuated. We are there to keep the peace but we're also there to protect people's property and their lives. Again, as I've said each day, lawlessness will not be tolerated. Thank you. Thank you. Colonel Taylor, Department of Natural Resources. Yes, sir. Thank you, Governor. Yes, sir. Uh, as, as we have as been stated earlier, we have moved now from the flash flood um, situation that we had across the state now to river flooding. Uh, we'll be concentrating our efforts on the PD Basin uh, specifically in the Lumber River, Little PD River, Great PD River, and we will be spending some time in the Lynch's River as well uh, due to some heavy rainfall during the flash flooding. We aren't expecting issues in the, in the Lynch's River, but it's one that we will be watching closely to ensure that everyone is safe. Um, our river patrols will be 24 hours a day. We will have boats in the water in those effective areas um, around the clock. Uh, for two reasons. One and first most is for safety. In case we have anyone involved, anyone that stayed, that we can, we can still get out of the water, out of the affected area, we will do so for evacuation. Um, secondary to that, we protection of property. We'll have our officers there. Many of these 
um, homes and properties will be isolated because of the flood water. So we will have law enforcement personnel in our boats there to protect that property and protect specifically against looting. As we move forward, we would want everyone to know that in some of these areas, specifically like the Waccamaw River, for example, that we will see that river rise to uh, a, sta a flood stage that's higher than we've recorded so far. Um, the highest level was in Floyd, around 19 feet. I don't have that in front of me right now, but it will be higher than that as prediction, higher than Floyd. But what we'll see that will be unusual, the river will come up, and it will seem to stop rising or crest. Uh, and then we'll get that next wave of water out of North Carolina, which then will cause it to rise again. So we may have not two flood events, but a, a pause in the flood event and then a rise again. So we would want everyone to know when they see the water crest or appear to crest, it may actually not be cresting. So stay there, wait. When you see a crest, it doesn't mean the flood situation is over. Um, wait till the water recedes. That's all I have to go. Thank you. Thank you. Director Joan Meacham, Department of Social Services. <clears throat> Thank you, Governor. As of 2 o'clock, we currently have 328 persons in shelters in South Carolina. 308 of those are in general population shelters, and 20 are in special medical needs shelters. There are 13 total shelters open, 8 are general population and five are special medical needs. None of the shelters are full at this time. Of the, of the eight general population shelters that we have open, four, only four are in schools at this time. We're working diligently to move the persons in those shelters out so we into community recreation centers or churches where we can turn those buildings back over to school so they can resume normal operations. As we shift our resources toward the PD, we have staff on standby to, uh, as local emergency management divisions call for shelters to be open, we're confident we have the staff ready and, and available um, to man those shelters. Uh, the Department of Social Services has had over 760 personnel working on this mass care operation. The Rare, uh, American Red Cross has had approximately 528 persons assisting with this mission. The Salvation Army has had over 479 persons that have helped with food and sna uh, snacks, not only by for people that have been affected by the storm, but also for our first responders. And Feeding the Carolinas, the Low Country Food Bank, and Harvest Hope have processed and distributed over 160,000 pounds of food and supplies, as well as provided over 131,000 meals during this disaster. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Director Kim Stinson, Director of Emergency Management Division. Thank you, sir. Uh, at the local level, in terms of the county emergency operations centers, we still got 13 that are operational, and I expect that to remain for the near term. Their primary focus is, as, uh, as stated before, flood fighting operations, primarily in the PD. Uh, many residents along major rivers that we've already discussed and in low-lying areas are reloc relocating to, uh, to safer areas, and that's ongoing right now, but we expect uh, several thousand people uh, to relocate. We're starting to get in uh, some reports of damages. Uh, so far, not so many in terms of residential and business damage. We expect that to increase over the next several days. And in the infrastructure area, uh, we're getting reports of anything from water uh, treatment centers to lift stations to culverts to roads that are being damaged. And that we expect them to increase over the next few days as well. We have our personal uh, embedded in uh, emergency operations centers in Chesterfield, Darlington, Dillon, Florence, Georgetown, Ori, Marlboro, and Marion uh, to maintain connectivity. Logistical uh, requests that we received so far from the local authorities, it's over a, a thousand, which is a new record for us. Uh, and we've got 923 of those which are in progress or, or completed at this time. We've established a staging area in Florence uh, to be able to push commodities into the PD area. And we've uh, also pushed uh, commodities, uh, food and water into two locations in Horry County. Uh, as you know, the governor had requested a major declaration for 23 counties of South Carolina uh, earlier. Uh, we've got, uh, he received word that eight of those were uh, approved for emergency protective measures and, and uh, uh, 
direct federal assistance. Uh, that request is still open and active, and we're working very closely with the local authorities and with FEMA uh, to turn on all those other programs, uh, individual assistance, and all the categories of public assistance, infrastructure repair, uh, as soon as we can. Uh, and we'll continue to uh, provide uh, FEMA data, both projected data and actual real-world data on a continuous basis. And we've got some of our personnel today that are in the PD area, and they'll be there again tomorrow uh, and doing flyovers and checking the, the damages similar to what the governor showed us here earlier uh, so that we can provide that information to FEMA as well. And just a final reminder, uh, the uh, South Carolina public information phone system is still operational. They've received over 11,000 calls, and SCEMD.org is a good place to go for any disaster information and also our uh, mobile app on, on your cell phone. Sir? Thank, thank you. you. Any questions? <coughs> uh, question for Colonel Taylor. Colonel yeah. Taylor. And, uh, you were talking before about uh, the uh, Waccamaw and the double crest. Uh, for, for a national audience who doesn't necessarily know South Carolina that well, but may know some of the towns or cities that you're talking about, <coughs> what places are in the most danger from that double crest? Well, specifically it would be Conway. The Waccamaw comes out of North Carolina and the town that is directly in the path or the Waccamaw actually circles around Conway to some degree. Conway would be the town there where we would have the greatest population. There may be some small river communities, but Conway is the town. So when do you expect that crest to come? I mean, the well, we're, crest. we're thinking that the final crest will be Sunday, Monday. Um, that's a little hard to predict now because um, we don't have all the information from the water out of North Carolina. It really hasn't crested in North Carolina yet. So as we see it start to crest in North Carolina, especially as it gets close to the South Carolina border, we'll have a lot better information in a day or so. Will it be a matter of days, hours between those two, two you know, crests? Yes, it would be a short period of time. It would it'd be a day, a, a 12 to 12, 12 hour period. You may see the, what you'll see is the water will be coming up and it'll level for a while. Everyone will think that's a crest and then it will then turn upwards again. How about 501 at Gallivant's Ferry? When might that be cut off? 501 at Gallivant's Ferry, we believe, is going to be... Late Thursday, Friday. Late Thursday, Late Thursday Friday. Friday. And it'll be at a, at a level similar to Matthew, maybe a little less than Matthew, but in inches. Any ETA in terms of uh, reopening I-95? Ms. Hall? I'm sorry, what was the question? With regards to I-95, I was wondering if there's any kind of ETA assessment as to um, when that section may open. In South Carolina, we are currently uh, conducting uh, underwater inspection and inspection of the bridges in that area to determine if, uh, if it's safe to reopen. So we are, we are out there currently trying to get it reopened as quickly as we can. While you're up there, what other major roads might be cut off beyond the ones you, yeah. Listed. Well, it's it's the drivers should expect as these floodwaters uh, come through the state through those river basins that Director Taylor mentioned that all the majority of those river crossings will likely overtop, and that's the whole purpose of that Project Lifeline that we put in place to make sure that we have access into the Ori area via 378 and 501 bypass. So. Just like the governor mentioned previously, if, uh, if a road's flooded, certainly don't drive through it. Do not drive around any of our barricades and obey the direction of your local officials with regards to access. More questions? Governor, it sounds like uh, President Trump has confirmed he's coming to town. Um, what is it like having uh, the president have you know, be readily available for state. Well, they'll be making all of those announcements, but of course we're very happy to have the president here. He's He's been here in spirit with communications and those of his cabinet members and agencies since this began. Where might you be taking him or what do you want him to Although any such announcements will be made by, by the president or by the White House, if and when they're made. General Livingston, saw the Chinook outside going up in the air. Where, where was it heading? Do you know? Oh. Can you say? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know if you can say where, where it was headed. I didn't know if it was taking Yes, yeah, so we had, we, we, there's actually two Chinooks, so okay. that's, that's the reason I'm looking a little confused. Okay. Uh, 
One was an active duty Chinook that uh, just stopped by for maintenance repair. Okay. And then we had another one that headed to the coast, uh, carrying supplies and uh, personnel. The coal yes, ash pits were mentioned. Are you confident enough is being done, or what are your concerns there? We're not confident uh, enough. Uh, we have high confidence in what we're doing, but we also have high confidence in the strength and power of this flood that's coming. So we're doing everything we can to guard the people of our state from damage. What specifically are you doing in regards to the coal pit? In regards to the coal pit, as you noticed, we were there yesterday getting a bird's eye view of helicopter and taking photographs. Ms. Hall has been there, Adjutant General has been there, and <coughs> uh, work is, is being conducted to guard them from the water. Ms. Hall. Yes, sir. Thank you, Governor. As the Governor mentioned, uh, there, there has been some coordination amongst the uh, state agencies, including Santee Cooper, to talk about the, projection, the projected water levels. Uh, and what assets they have available to, to uh, try to address the projected rise in waters. They are moving forward with a plan to implement some filter fabric on the top of the, the uh, structure as well as my understanding they uh, may be resourcing some sandbags to help elevate that level as well. So Santee Cooper is engaged. They are working with their state partners as needed to try to uh, get materials to the site based on their requests and we're trying to make sure that we're coordinating and getting them what they need when they tell us they need it. So what does that mean yeah, downriver if it... Let's see. General, did you want to add to that? Well, we, we continue to coordinate also with the Department of Transportation and the uh, Santee Cooper uh, providing uh, float bridges uh, that we would use to uh, uh, cross a river in, in combat operations to uh, put their pumps on so they can continue to equalize from the inside the pit and outside the pit and also the equalizing that fabric as you get up top. What yeah. might your concerns be if that if all those preparations don't work? Well we, of course we have concerns of, about the strength of this flood and the damage that it potentially can cause and one area of that concern of course is that is the road highway 501 it merges with 378 to go into Horry County that's the main artery we must protect that. Uh, efforts are being made, as mentioned, we're working with Santee Cooper to, to do the best we can to protect those coal ash pits from overtopping or overflowing by the waters uh, from the flood. But we are highly confident in the strength of that flood and we know it's coming. It's just a matter of how, how high is it going to be and how strong is the water going to be. Speaking of three Sir, yeah, Director Wilson's not here. Oh, there he is. I, I think he might say something about downstream. <clears throat> Director uh, Dave Wilson, Department of Health and Environmental Control. Thank you, Governor. Of course, one of the issues is making sure that no drinking water sources are impacted. So both the Grand Strand Water and Sewer Authority and Georgetown Water are looking at that to make sure they can continue to provide uninterrupted service uh, should there be a problem there. Speaking of uh, 378, um, I know that that was just wrapped up, but any kind of idea, assessment as to kind of how well that's working at this point, kind of what the status is there? It's working very well. As uh, you can see from the live feeds, the vehicles are going across, and even with, with all the construction and all the, the military vehicles and the civilian vehicles and tractors and sandbags and people and everything else that's out there with two lanes operating, uh, we, we have... Um, about it takes about a four minute ride to get across this mile and a half that's being worked on right there at the old Granger site uh, just south of, of Conway on, on that bypass. We timed a few vehicles just in, test, in anticipation of these kinds of questions and it's, it's about a four, four and a half minute even with a couple of stops during the time for emergency vehicles or, or tractors or military vehicles to, to cross the road carrying sandbags and such. So it's flowing very well. And once they get through that one and a half mile stretch there, then there's, there's no obstacle at all. It's working well. Is it possible to give an estimate of how much damage you guys are expected to see in all these areas? That's, that's extensive. Yes. It's, uh, it's hard to estimate because every storm is different, but I'll just give you a point of reference for um, Hurricane Matthew, uh, we had about $300 million worth of infrastructure damage. So I would expect to have something like that along these lines in, in, in that ballpark. Uh, and we probably could see 
you know, again, approximately 34,000, maybe people over 30,000 will be affected in some way. Uh, how much damage that is, kind of hard to tell right now, but uh, it's going to affect uh, quite a few anyway. Any rescue numbers yet? Any rescue tallies? No, I, yeah. We can get those numbers for you. I'll get them for you. I don't have them. Been, it's been a very active, yeah, been active re rescue, but the information is slow coming in. But one, yes, one thing I think is worth noting as we came into this storm, we encouraged people from day one to evacuate. And we've seen a very good response, especially in these flooded areas like Nichols and, and that little PD area that were caught by surprise last time and so many people were trapped in their homes. Uh, by getting this message of leave um, now, uh, we think we've had very good response from a flood standpoint, not from the storm, but specifically from the flood standpoint of people in those effective areas leaving. Uh, I, like I said earlier, Nichols, there's one person there now, that's the mayor, he will be leaving. Uh, and down the area of Little PD, Fort Rich, right under that site, it was so affected last time, all of those people have evacuated. So we've seen very, very good evacuation in response to the flood. For Director Stenson, just, uh, uh, you were talking about a thousand requests for uh, logistics. I'm assuming that you're talking food, water, that kind of thing. These requests are coming from different different towns, communities? Well, they come generally from the county level and then some state agencies, but most of them are from local authorities. And they range from sandbags to generators to Spanish interpreters to food, water, pretty much you name it. That uh, Generators uh, certainly were earlier and they're, they're going to continue to be probably. But it's pretty much the whole gamut of anything that you might need. More questions? Yes, ma'am. Was there a concern that people came back after the the, uh, the storm passed, thinking that things were going to be okay, or, or in those areas of Horry County, or were those? No, ma'am. We, we wanted them to come back once the winds had left Horry County. The, the, once the hurricane had passed, we wanted people to, but assuming their homes were undamaged and there were no live wires or, or other such dangers, get back to their homes as, as quickly as they could. Uh, in, in order to and to stock up and also to allow supplies and other emergency vehicles and whatever needed to get there to go ahead and get there in anticipation of the fact that this the road may be cut off by the flood so that's why we're working so hard to keep that road open that is 501 and 378 we want to keep it open but in in case it it does get flooded at least the people have gotten back to their homes it won't be flooding on Myrtle Beach but it'll be flooding between Conway and, and that. Any idea of the population that's in that flood zone across the PD? We're right now we're estimating over 30,000 that uh, could be again could be affected by this uh, in the low-lying areas or along the river. And how much stuff was staged in terms of getting materials to them through water supplies? Well, we've got a forward base set up in Florence. Uh, they've got three days uh, food and water for 30,000 people. Uh, we've, we've got uh, a smaller amount in Ori uh, and uh, Conway and in Myrtle Beach uh, for probably 3,000 people for, for that period of time. Uh, and then uh, we've got uh, other existing contracts that we can call on. Uh, and then we've got uh, also FEMA is here. They've moved their assets forward as well, the commodities to Florence. So we can call on them. So. We're in pretty good shape right now for uh, for commodities, food, and water. Governor, if I could add yes, sir. Yeah. In addition to stockpiling <coughs> commodities, we also have contingencies that if we're not able to maintain uh, the land bridge, uh, we can provide a water bridge of uh, float equipment to carry supplies over, plus an air bridge uh, to bring supplies over. So it's it's not like this is the only preposition stock that's out there. Uh, we can maintain uh, the people indefinitely if we had to. Further questions? Social media has been kind of big with showing people like taking themselves as safe or if they need requests. Have you, has your team utilized social media to get needs to people or have rescues? Stenson? Uh, I'm not aware that we've done that, but we actively monitor that all the time. And, uh, you know, certainly if we got something and it came in that way, is, is that, you know, we'd, we'd action it if we needed to. Further questions? Thank you very much. Thank you.